Hey, Angelia, how are you? I'm doing fine. Okay, you should be good. Okay. I would like to call the meeting of the St. Louis County Board of Zoning Adjustment to order. The board members present today are Angelia Bills Chair, Justin Randall, Vice Chair. The Department of Planning staff members are Debbie Nesbitt, Mel Wilson, Abby Freudel, Ashra Mikramathalaka, Peter Grine, and Gretchen Arnold. Also on the call today is John Burford from the, the County Council's Office. First, I would like to offer into the record the affidavit of publication pertaining to today's meeting, April 19, 2023. The board hereby takes official notice of and admits into evidence on the record the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 1003, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 is amended, and Chapter 1004, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974 is amended. Next, I would like to call for a motion to approve the minutes of the previous B BZA meeting of April 5th, 2023. Make a motion to approve the minutes. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. This meeting is conducted as a teleconference and is recorded. The planning staff will read each request into the record and present technical advice to the board if needed. The petitioner will be unmuted, state their name, and make a brief presentation to the board explaining the reason and hardship for the requested variance. The board will not consider financial hardships. Board members may ask questions to clarify the facts. When the board is satisfied with the material presented, the chairperson will then ask if there is anyone in favor or opposition to the request. To do so, click the hand next to your name. If any comments were submitted, staff will read them into the record. Before a call for the vote, the petitioner may request a continuance in order to bring in additional documentation. The board may also request a continuance to gather additional information or for a visit to the site. Once comments have been heard, the chairperson will call for a vote. At that time, the discussion is ended. No further discussion is permitted. The board will generally make a decision today. Since there are only two members at this time, if the board's vote is split one to one, the request will be deemed denied. If a variance is approved, the petitioner has six months to obtain the necessary permits or establish the use requested or the variance will expire. The petitioner or any interested party has the right of appeal to the St. Louis County Circuit Court. Paperwork indicating the board's decision will be mailed to the petitioners. All right, 18-23, Mary Bogaki is a request for an exception to the side yard regulations for the purpose of constructing a room addition at 4116 Southern Air Drive maintaining a side yard of four feet in lieu of six feet as required by the R4 residence district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. And Mike, I'm gonna send you a request now so you can unmute yourself and present to the board. Thank you, this is Mike Hancock. So representing uh, Mary Bogacki today. So we're looking at doing a room addition on the back of the house. Um, reading through, uh, Originally, when we were going through this, the building permit requirements, we were trying to stay under that three foot that was listed in the paperwork for the fire rating, not understanding that there was a six foot setback. Um, shifting this build over to the right really isn't a good option due to the slope of the yard. Uh, we're really concerned about uh, water coming in through the foundation, if that's the case. Um, not only that, we got the H. It's going to require all kinds of other extensive stuff, uh, including the HVAC unit, the condenser that sits there. So we'll have to move that to complete opposite side of the house. But our biggest concern there is obviously water flow coming down in there. So keeping it shifted over to the far left there, we are able to get a swell in there and direct the water around the building and still have plenty of room to the other side there. Um, the last thing I got is if you look at the property line. So we're not asking for four foot all the way down the property line. It's literally just that back corner there. So as you come around between the existing fences there and the addition, that would be about four, four foot six there.
Justin, do you have any questions? Um, I, I guess not at this time. Is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see any hands, so at this time I'm going to mute the petitioner's rep. Okay. 18, is that 18-23? Yes, ma'am. Okay, 18-23, I vote to approve the variance as advertised. Uh, I'll second it based on the shape of the lot. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. None opposed. The motion carries. 22-23 Chester Plaza is a request for an exception to the front yard and sign regulations for the purpose of replacing signage at 13826 Manchester Road, maintaining a front yard of 2 feet in lieu of 15 feet and a sign size of 100 square feet in lieu of 50 square feet, as required by the C8 Plan Commercial District Regulations and Section 1003.168 Sign Regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and C8 Ordinance 25545. And Joe, I'm going to request for you to unmute and you'll be able to present to the board. Thank you all very much. I'm Joe Phillips with Pyro Signs. I'm representing uh, Chester Plaza. What we've proposed to do is to replace an existing uh, pylon sign that they have there uh, using the existing structure that is currently in place, the structure and footing. Currently, the sign is right now uh, right at 100 square feet as well. The, the new sign will be just a half a square foot or so smaller than what is currently there. The setback itself, the current sign has a, approximately a three foot setback right now. Uh, the sign is approximately is right at nine feet wide. We're going to 11 feet wide, which will put us two feet from the property line at that point. Uh, there's about a 30 foot uh, right of way between Manchester Road and the property line. So in order to meet the setback variance, uh, setback requirements, the sign would have to be totally shifted back into the parking lot. Um, so it would end up losing a parking space within that parking lot in order to meet the setback. Uh, as size sign wise uh, for the size, we are basically maintaining the existing sign size that they have currently that's been in place for quite a few years. So uh, we're just asking basically to be able to maintain what they already have in place and not move the sign backwards, uh, maintain the same basic overall size, and then uh, be able to utilize the structure that they currently have in place. Uh, to where uh, where the sign is at now, as I say, it's it's approximately 30 feet or more from, I think, Manchester, the way the site map showed. So we would not really be encroaching upon Manchester any further. Uh, as I say, we're, we'll, we'll go a foot closer to the property line than what the sign is right now. Just trying to basically maintain what they have, but give the sign a, a better update and make things look a little bit nicer and actually give them a sign that's working at this point. Okay, and what is the hardship for the need to expand the sign? The hardship, the way they have now is uh, basically the, the sign where it's where it's in place has been in place since the development that they've that they've had since the development has been in place. We would have to shift that sign all the way back into the parking lot. Therefore, they would start losing parking spaces and put the sign more in peril with with cars that would be driving. I guess trying to park on either side of it as well. So it would really put that sign in peril and put anybody else who who would be driving around it in, in peril as well. There really is no other location for the sign other than back into the parking lot. And that's just usually not a good a good place to put the sign at that point. Joe, is there any reason why you've got to come another additional foot closer to the property line? I mean, it's Basically, already in. It, it was, make it was it the even. design of the sign. It's the, the sign cap itself that is 11 feet. We're, they're trying to make it look a little more architecturally sound. They've uh, they've been up. I think they updated the plaza as well. So it's just trying to bring the sign more into, I guess, architectural elements of, of the building as well. Uh, it just to me, it just it gives it a lot nicer look having that cap on there. It doesn't have advertising on it, but it's just basically it's an architectural element that helps draw the sign, I guess, into the same the same look as the building. 
the the sign that they have there now is as you can see is old and it's had some add-ons over the years it looks like but it's just really not in good shape and it's just not fitting with with the character of what they've been doing as far as update wise to their plaza we still maintain i guess the sign itself will still maintain you know approximately 32 feet away from manchester road compared to the 33 feet that it's at now yeah The only other way, also, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, the only other way to do it would be to basically offset the structure uh, as far as the sign within the structure to maintain what they have now. But at that point, it, it just kind of looks cockeyed just based on having one side of the sign hang over the poles a little bit more than the other side. And sometimes that just looks like a mistake when you do things like that. And there, there's rhyme and reason for doing things like that, which this could be a reason. But sometimes it just it makes it look like it's a mistake. Will it also increase the visibility? Yeah, the, they're going to advertise their their main tenants on it now. So there there will only be four tenants really advertised four tenant panels compared to I think the six that they have now plus the nameplate on there. So it gives those tenants who have who have honestly decided to stick it out with a lot of these small retail centers. It gives them better visibility to the Manchester Road and to the cars that are going through there. As everybody knows, Manchester is one of the uh, three busiest arterial roadways in St. Louis, along with the Rock Road and, and Lindbergh. So there are a lot of cars that go through there. It sits off the roadway quite a long ways. The sign's nowhere near as large as many of the signs on the other side of, of Manchester Road, which could be within sometimes within the city of Manchester, who has given quite a few, I guess, a little more leeway to some of those plazas over there. So it, it, it keeps... Honestly, it keeps this site a little more competitive. It, it, it rewards those people who have stuck out, stuck it out with this plaza, and it, it gives them some better visibility. Okay, Justin, do you have any more questions? No. Is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I don't see anybody, so at this time I'm going to mute the petitioner's representative. Um, so I understand the hardship for reusing the existing pylon, not meeting the sign, uh, code of 15 feet, but I just don't see any necessary hardship to approve an additional foot, um, closer to the road. Um, but, uh, those are just my thoughts, Angelia. Okay. Okay. So do you move that we deny so, yeah, that? I mean, I can, I'll make a motion on uh, nine, or, sorry, 22 dash 23 to uh, recommend approval of a sign variance uh, to allow the uh, front yard to remain as uh, the current sign, um, which apparently, according to the testimony, was three feet uh, and a size of 100 square feet in lieu of the 50. Square feet. Okay. And I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. None opposed. The motion carries. 23-23 Danny Rodriguez is a request for an exception to the front and side yard regulations for the purpose of maintaining an existing single family residence, constructing a second story room addition, a new covered porch, and replacing existing deck at 628 uh, Castlewood Drive, maintaining a front yard of 7 feet in lieu of 50 feet and a side yard of 9 feet in lieu of 20 feet for all existing and proposed construction as required by the NU non-urban district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. And Mickey and Danny, I'm gonna send you both requests so you can both be unmuted. And you're good to go. Okay. So the current home was constructed in 1917, probably well before uh, the zoning code existed. Um, the actual footprint of the 1917 home uh, does not sit with within any of the current required setbacks right now. Um, the there was a garage and living room addition constructed 
1992, according to the county records, that's what is shown there um, to the left hand side of the 1917 edition um, on the screen there. That's that left hand rectangle. That also does not sit within the current um, zoning requirements for setbacks. Um, my guess is that at that time, they probably got a variance request as well to construct that garage and living room addition. Um, so we are requesting three variances for the lot. Um, the first is to construct a second level addition above the current living room and garage. Um, the exterior walls will be constructed on top of the first floor structure. So nothing will encroach any further onto the um, property than the current living room and garage already does. Um, the second project is for a deck along the front of the home. There is an existing deck um, located along the castle or the Cedar Ridge Road um, street. That current deck um, actually sits over the current property line by about a foot. You can see that on the existing survey. Um, and what we are proposing is to replace that deck at the same depth as the previous deck was located, but we will actually be shortening it. So it will be eight feet from the property line instead of over the property line. Then the third new construction project is for a new covered front porch. Um, so as part of the construction, the owner is um, converting a lower level garage that faces Cedar Ridge Road into a new formal entry and um, office space. And so there will be uh, the formal front door facing Cedar Ridge Road. And we'd like to construct a porch covering over the top of that new um, entryway along Cedar Ridge Road. And uh, what is the reason, what, what is the hardship? The so, the hard, so the hardship is that the uh, second story addition is going to be constructed on top of the existing first floor there and the existing foundation walls. So we're going vertical. We're not creating anything that's closer to the property line um, than what is already there. So that's for our second level addition. Um, for the deck, we are replacing um, a deteriorating uh, existing structure that was really uninhabitable um, with another uh, deck in its location. Um, and, and, that, and you're sorry, and you're making that one smaller, so it'll actually yes, we're making it smaller. Yes, so it will actually yes, so it will actually not be over the property line. Um, and then for the front porch, uh, nothing that will be constructed for that new front porch um, is any closer to the property line than other items that are already non-compliant. So it's actually in line with the deck and it sits um, 12 feet from the side property line, whereas the current garage sits only 9 feet. From that current property line. Are there any neighbors surrounding you? Uh, so the house faces uh, Cedar Ridge Road there, while the address is um, technically, um, I guess it's actually the address is Castlewood Drive, but it sits there on. Uh, Cedar Ridge Road. Um, there is an empty lot to the south of us, um, and then we do have a rear a rear neighbor there. You can see on the screen there up by that number six seventeen. This is a question for staff. I think it says in the um, notice that the front yard is fifty. What is the rear yard setback in these districts? So the rear is twenty. So, and then on the site plan, I think you said your lot depth is a hundred. Yeah, it's a hundred. So 
um, none of the current house itself really sits within those current setbacks required by the current zoning code, aside from a very small triangle of the um, the garage and living room addition that was constructed in 1992. Everything else sits, you know, hugs right up to the, the lot lines um, of that 1917 um, designated lot. Gotcha. Angelia, that's all of my questions right now. Okay, is there anyone in favor or opposition? Um, I do know we have a raised hand, so give me one second here. I'm going to mute the petitioner's rep, and then, Mickey, if we have further questions, we'll unmute you again. Michelle, I sent you a request to unmute yourself. Just please also state your name for the record. Yeah, Michelle Schwartz. Um, I actually live at 634 Castlewood Drive. So from our house and our side yard, we stare directly at the front of the house. That's considered 628 Castlewood Drive. And I have to say that I am all for any improvements that they want to make. And it's refreshing to have someone come into the community and want to, to truly fix things instead of just band-aiding things that have been, you know, decaying for so long. So I'm very grateful for, you know, the changes that will hopefully come. That sounds good. Is there anyone else in favor or opposition? I don't see anybody else at this time. Okay. Hearing none, 23-23, uh, I vote to approve the variances advertised and the hardship just being just a need to upgrade the property uh, it seems like it's kind of a rural area and it, it will not cause any uh, harm to the neighborhood. I'll, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, none opposed. The motion carries. Thank you. 24-23, James and Karen Burr are, is a request for an exception to the side yard regulations to allow the construction of a 30 foot by 48 foot detached garage, which will be more than half of the footprint of the home and over 1000 square feet in size at 3731 Phillip Meadow Court, maintaining a side yard of 10 feet in lieu of 20 feet as required by section four of the NU non-urban district regulations of the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance. And Jim, I'm gonna request for you to unmute so that way you can present to the board. Uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, this is uh, Jim Burr, and I also have Dennis Sharp with uh, Coach House Garages. He's the contractor of the proposed uh, detached garage. Uh, I did have a presentation. I guess I can't share a presentation or anything. Just talk it. So, I let me see here. I might be able to make it where you can become a panelist. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, that's probably okay. I just had some pictures and stuff that I thought. Yeah, we will show some pictures as well. Yes. So. Okay. So, uh, regarding the variances, uh, first address the size variance. Uh, my wife and I have a modest uh, car collection that's increasing in size. Uh, vehicles are very valuable investment and you know, we feel require an enclosed uh, storage to protect their value. Uh, we also want to afford the same opportunities for our daily drivers and have them uh, garaged as well. So further our belief that the county probably would be prefer to see these cars inside of a structure rather than just out on the property and whatnot. So, and regarding the 10 foot setback, um, the watershed in this area, unfortunately, a lot of the water flows onto my property and what's not shown on, uh, on the one pictures that you have is I've got a fairly large pond in the backyard that uh, went to some great expense to, to improve because the majority of the water, like I said, flows from all the neighbors and stuff. I put in two sets of drain tiles and catch basins to run the water into the pond, and then there's a spillway into a, a, a ravine that's in the back of the property. So, like I said, a majority of the water runs onto our property and different uh, have different uh, um, you know, runoff problems and stuff. 
Uh, we get some runoff from our driveway still, and we get a little bit of runoff from our neighbors and stuff. And those paths are fairly well established. So the 10 foot setback would help us maintain the, the current runoff from the adjoining property and drive without any disturbances in that. Um, and it also would allow for the potential, unfortunately we're on septic here, if we ever have to relocate a septic, would allow some additional space um, to the side to, to allow for uh, a secondary septic. It best aligns for the access to the existing driveway. And last but not least, it's a little more aesthetically pleasing uh, the way it's all laid out. So. Um, the current car collection I have, this is where I had some pictures, pretty pictures of the cars and stuff. Just brought home a 1958 Chrysler 300D that's sitting in the garage, had to put something out in the driveway until then. And I also have a 1960 Chrysler 300F that's currently undergoing restoration. Both vehicles are uh, very low production rates. The, the D, there's one of 52 survivors. The F's one of 212 survivors. I also have a classic uh, Triumph, uh, an older Mustang uh, trailer, and then our we've got three daily drivers, a newer Mustang, uh, a truck, and uh, a Ford Edge. So I think that's pretty much it. You know, the building that we're proposing is also going to be aesthetically pleasing. It's going to be a stick frame rather than pole bar construction. Siding and roof will complement the uh, current uh, property uh, or the home on the property. Uh, and then I think you've got kind of the pictures of the elevations and side views and whatnot. I think that's about it, unless you've got some questions for me. How was the lot coverage? Sorry. Uh, it's a three acre lot, if that's. Uh, and so it's a corner fine. lot, so it's uh, roadways on two sides. Lot coverage Which, would not be an issue. It's not an issue. Okay. No. And and how about the footprint of the home? Is that an issue? Uh, we have a total, according to the records, uh, county records, the total living area is 1,142 square feet. Uh, I, so I think those numbers are actually wrong. I tried to add up the stuff and the and the footprint and stuff, and that didn't quite make sense to me. So, but um, you okay. actually show like on the county records, the total number is like 2,900 and then living area. When they started that, the, the shapes and stuff they drew on there were very odd. I don't think somebody, I don't think math was good for them that day, but you know, whatever. <laughs> so. Uh, so the footprint is just the first floor, right, Debbie? The first floor minus the garage and any decks or porches. Yeah, and they didn't include like part of the kitchen in the laundry area when they were adding up the numbers on the first floor. And then I don't, you know, we do have a second floor with the two bedrooms and a Jack and Jill bath and stuff. So, yeah. But I do notice, um, Mr. Burr, on the uh, measurements, it's a 30 by 48, correct? So it's actually 1,440 square feet versus your 1,500 that was requested. So that makes it a little smaller than the, the plan. Um, and I just wanted to let the board know there are very, uh, very many properties out there that have at least one and a lot of them have two and three buildings on them. So yeah, just, if, you, if you look, we're unincorporated <laughs> area and it's like, you know, every fourth or fifth house around here has uh, fairly large structures. As a matter of fact, the picture you're showing right now shows my neighbor who's got, I'm not sure how big that is, but I think it's like around 1500 square foot. There's yeah. a couple, uh, three or four others around here. One of them is actually massive. I know they had problems when they actually bought the place. They thought they're going to have to tear it down, but uh, there's quite a few, uh, um, instances of, you know, pole barns and other structures and stuff around here. Another car collector down the street that's got actually three different buildings on his, which I thought they're only supposed to have one, but. Right. Um, he's got and, yeah, so and a lot nice. of, a lot of them I've seen were actual pole barns where yours is going to be 
uh, stick built, so it'll look a lot nicer. Yep. The Mr. Burr, just a question for you. Um, you know, you've got three acres. Is there really not? We may have lost. We may have lost them, Justin. Give me one second to see if I can find them. Okay. Um. Okay, hang on. Here we go. Jim, can you unmute yourself again? There we go. Yep. <laughs> yeah, for some reason I got muted. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh, no, just, we lost him. <laughs> Go ahead, Justin. So, so I have a question for you. Just, you've got a three-acre site. Um, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying, I, I'm struggling to find a hardship to give you a side yard setback of 10 feet when you've got three acres to find. 20. Well, if you, if you look at the entire property, uh, an overview, uh, there's a third of an acre that's on which uh -huh. you just saw a picture of that. So as you swung through there, yep. Yeah, and that's an older picture, but a big chunk of its pond and then off to the, the right, I don't know if this is truly oriented in the right direction, but the right lower side, some big specimen trees there that I really would not want to uh, interfere with. Um, and then of course the side road access, septic field is to the right of the house right now. Um, so it'd be difficult to, to, and then the proposed secondary septic would be like in between the pond and the house, that area there. And perk tests were pretty poor in that area because of a lot of the water in there. So it would have to probably be enlarged to, if we ever had to use that area for a secondary. So, um, you know, if if we have to ditch the, the setback and move it the 20 foot, I, you know, I guess we could, it's just gonna, change the uh, the approach angles from the existing drive will change and and then aesthetically it won't look quite as pleasing from sitting on our back deck and all that but uh... okay well that's my only that was my only question Angelia okay um I'm trying to think of what was that question I was going to ask you um so what is your hardship? Well, the hardship is the possession of the uh, number of valuable uh, cars that need to be stored inside and inadequate space on the property right now, and also want to afford the same protection to our daily drivers. So these cars are, you know, upwards of $100,000 each and prices are going up um, and they really need to be protected in inside for, away from, you know, weather. You know, we saw the bad weather last week and I was worried that the cars I had sit now we're going to get hail damage to, uh, and then, you know, vandalism and everything else. To, uh, Do you have an existing garage on the house? Yes. A two car garage. It's a three car. Three. See it there. New Chrysler is in there, and then our daily drivers are on the other side, and uh, there's two cars sitting out in the driveway right now. Um, the 300F hasn't come home yet, but when it does, it's going to need a spot. Uh, Justin, do you have any any other questions? No, not right now. Is there anyone here in favor or opposition? I do see a hand, so give me just a second here to mute the petitioner for the moment. Um, and then, obviously, Jim, if we have more questions, we'll unmute you again. Uh, Shamika, I'm going to request for you to unmute yourself, and you can just state your name for the board, first and last, and then go ahead. Sure. My name is Shamika Smith. Um, I am in the property adjacent to of the curves at 3725 Philip Meadows Court. Um, I am in favor of the garage. Um, honestly, the, the only, I mean, we would be the ones looking at it and I don't foresee there being an issue um, with that garage. And as stated earlier, um, there are a number of properties uh, in this subdivision that have multiple uh, units uh, on their property. Um, so it wouldn't even, um, 
I don't, it, it would definitely not be an eyesore to the community at all. Um, and again, I'm the neighbor literally right there um, next to the RV that you see there. So our yard is right next to his. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I don't see anybody else. I think this is mine, Justin. Yeah, you can have it. <laughs> um, 25-23. 24-23. I vote to approve the variance as advertised at, well, I don't know if it's at advertised, but I approve it at 1,440 square feet. Can I do that? Yes. Okay. Um, with the hardship being the need for additional storage for the vehicles, um, the lot coverage is good, and I, you know, I, I think that it'll probably be an asset for the property. Your, what about the 10 feet, Angelia? And I also approve the 10 feet just so that it'll look aesthetically pleasing. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Okay, the motion carries. Thank you. Okay, and that is all we have petition-wise. Uh, Debbie, I know we have a something for good of the order for the board. Yes, uh, Jacob would, uh, the director of planning would like to uh, suggest a meeting of the whole to go over various things that, for the board. I think so, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it would basic, we would try to maybe work with you guys and see, but maybe prior to your next um, meeting, like at like 3.30, 3 o'clock. Okay. And the next one's yeah. gonna be on the third, right? Yes. And we do have a new board member that was a point, uh, confirmed yesterday so he will be um, with us on the third and then remember debbie i've got a conflict on the 17th but now that you got a third member it may not be an issue for you guys right and then we'll also be sending out an email probably later today um with just like a poll to maybe see if um and when members would be available to possibly just do kind of a quick like social like morning or afternoon social gathering to just kind of meet each other in person and see the staff yeah be good good sounds good so so I'll i make them... oh, oh good. Good. <laughs> we're about, about to do it <laughs> since we didn't do it last time right. sorry john <laughs> uh i'll make a motion to adjourn the bza meeting for today and i second it all those in favor Bye. Ocean um, meeting adjourned. Thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks.